fighting between forces of the United States and those of the Philippine Republic on February 4, 1899 in what became known as 1899 Battle of Manila. What turned out to be the bloodiest battle of the war ended late on February 5 with a decisive American victory. According to the U.S. Army report, 44 Americans were killed with another 194 wounded. Filipino casualties were estimated at 700 killed and 3,300 wounded. In this video, we will shed some light on the Filipino-American relations in the early years of the 20th century, focusing on the Filipino-American atrocities committed in the Philippine-American War. Concurrently, the Spanish Empire and the Americans wrathed each other's throat outside of the Philippines. So it's only natural that the Americans involve himself in the conflict taking place in the Philippines against Spain, providing support to the revolutionaries. After the Filipinos and Americans defeated the Spanish, the U.S. together with its former enemy started backstabbing the Filipinos by signing a treaty in Paris ending the Spanish-American War. The said treaty has stipulated that Spain had to give the Philippines, Cuba, and Puerto Rico for 20 million US dollars, practically buying the Philippines from Spain. If the Filipinos thought that Spanish sucks, they were in for a surprise. You too! I'm warning you! Philippine diplomat Felipe Agoncillo earlier went to the U.S. to urge the American President William McKinley to acknowledge the sovereignty of the Philippine independence, but the President ignored the acknowledgement. The U.S. already have plans in the Philippines. Now, the U.S. government succeeds the sovereignty of Spanish government over the Philippine Islands and proclaimed benevolent assimilation which outlined McKinley's game plan in colonizing policies for the Philippines. Filipino revolutionary leader Emilio Aguinaldo, however, issued a counter-proclamation denouncing the planned takeover of the Americans. But the Americans will not packing their bags. They've already mailed the check. By February 1899, a full-blown war had broken out between the Philippines and quote-unquote the new owner of the Philippine Islands. This is the Philippine-American War. According to Andrew Clems on his article The Filipino Genocide, the reasons behind the war and the conduct in which it was carried out makes one question if the war was actually a war or rather a modern 20th century genocide. In reality, the atrocities committed on the Philippines during the Philippine-American War suggest that the United States were unjust against Filipinos, brutalizing them with prejudicial treatment on the ground of their race and interested only in furthering American imperialism. The San Francisco Argonaut an influential Republican newspaper spoke candidly 
we do not want the Filipinos. We want the Philippines. The islands are enormously rich, but unfortunately, they are infested with Filipinos. As Clement says in his words, the ideas about racial differences were ideally suited for the goal of annexing the Philippines. The United States needed to either bring the Filipinos into the fold or remove them from the islands. One of the more benevolent ways of bringing them into the fold is through education, to civilize Filipinos and make them more like Americans. Large number of white teachers, particularly women, come to the Philippines to educate the next generation of Filipinos in American ways. Needless to say, Filipinos have no desire to be annexed and resistance to these aggressions soon manifested. When the fighting started, however, the Blue Eagles showed out their claws. There were two phases to the Philippine-American War. Funnily enough, it was General Douglas MacArthur's daddy, Arthur MacArthur, who first marched with the American troops against the forces of the Philippine Republic. This was in 1899 Battle of Manila, which on the 4th and 5th of February, between 19,000 U.S. troops under Army General Elwell Stephen Otis and 15,000 armed militiamen commanded by the Philippine President Emilio Aguinaldo. It was a raw brutality from that point on. With the Americans dominated Filipino forces ill-fated attempts to fight with bolo knives, spears, and bows against the better trained and well-equipped American troops. The Philippine Republic learned quite quick, however, that the conventional warfare wouldn't work in November of 1899, Aguinaldo dissolved the army and opted to fight a guerrilla war. They took off their uniforms and armors and mixed with the town folks. Now, it's harder for the U.S. to distinguish combatants from civilians. Soon, they stopped trying to distinguish them. American Brigadier General Jacob H. Smith in retaliation with the Filipino guerrillas' tactics, responded with a terror campaign. His instruction to his officers summarized America's new war strategy. I want no prisoners. I wish you to kill and burn. The better it will please me. I want all people be killed who are capable of bearing arms in actual hostilities against the United States. The general short of saying over the age of 10 are capable of bearing arms. A more conservative count suggests that between 200,000 to 250,000 died from the brutality, famine, and disease. Many died in concentration camps. Outside of concentration camps, other elements of Filipino were targeted as well, regardless of age or gender. American troops forced them to evacuate their homes or watch them burn. This was apparently an initiative to counter a guerrilla warfare as well, torturing captured men for intel. One of the most notorious torture methods that was developed by the American soldiers was the dreaded water cure. This torture method involved the forced pouring of salted water down an individual's throat and into one's stomach until their belly swelled out like a toad. Once full of water, the handlers of the torture would forcibly expel the water from the body either through punching or using the butt of a rifle. Some American troops believed their actions were justified, however, 
brutality in answer to brutality according to a letter written by an anonymous soldier from New York last night one of our boys was found shot and his stomach cut open immediately orders were received to burn the town and kill every native in sight Leonard F. Adams of First Washington Volunteers wrote home about a campaign in Luzon. In the path of Washington Regiment, there were 1,008 dead niggers and great many wounded. We burned all their houses. I don't know how many men, women, and children the boys did kill. They would not take any prisoners. General Jacob H. Smith, who ordered the killing of every male over 10 years old, apparently during the retaliatory campaign without waiting for orders to do so from General Elwell S. Otis, was later subjected to court-martial for conduct to the prejudice of good order and military discipline. He was suspended but no penalty was given. Official American reports claimed 15 Filipinos killed for every one American soldier wounded. Major General Elwell S. Otis explained this anomaly by the superior marksmanship of rural Southerners and Westerners, boys in blue uniforms who hunted all their lives. The decision made in Washington, D.C. affect not only the Americans, but countless numbers of people all over the world. One of these decisions in colonizing the Philippines made before the turn of the century was betrayal of alliance by the U.S. government and clearly altered the destiny of the Filipinos. What would you think would the Filipinos be like if the Philippines were not under any colonial rules? Are we the same savages as what the Americans thought of us during their unwanted stay here in our country? What could be our alternative future if we were just allowed to live on our own. If you have any thoughts of this, you're free to give a feedback on the comment section below.